Hi everybody, Nate with Tight Lines here, and today we're going to go over some of the basics as far as how we like to set up our leaders and what leader types we like to use when we're fishing for muskies. So first thing first, we're going to go over uh, the types of monofilament, fluorocarbon, and the basic tools we need. Uh, as simple as a leader as these are going to end up being, uh, the one thing that I like to emphasize is using quality materials. These are just a fish that you don't get a lot of shots at, so we like to use the best stuff that we can. Um, Starting here, going with the materials, uh, the butt section of this leader is going to be simply 40 pound Maxima Chameleon. The next material that we're going to use, and I'll explain a little bit more a little bit later about, uh, about this one, but 20 pound Maxi Chame Maxima Chameleon rather is going to be the next component. And in some instances, we might leave this one out, but for now, we're going to keep it in there. And then our bite guard choices are real simple, and there's a lot of debate going on uh, in personal preference, but the first option is some sort of heavy fluorocarbon. In this case, it's 80-pound cigar. The other option would be some sort of knottable wire, such as the Rio wire. And beyond that, that's pretty simple. A couple basic tools that you're going to want to have at your disposal when you're making these leaders at all times in the boat or if you make them at home ahead of time. Whoops. Nail knot tool like this. This is the tie fast. Very simple. Great little tool for a, numer uh, a couple different uh, uh, things that we do with it. I like to have some UV knot sense by Loon or some type of other epoxy or glue and then a nipper and that's about it. If you are dealing with wire you're going to want to make sure that you've got like a serrated uh, hemos or a pliers that can cut that. Now we're going to go into assembling one of these leaders. The first piece that we're going to be working with is again the 40 pound Maxima Chameleon and that is going to be our butt section and for that I like to run a chunk Start off with about four feet of it. That gives you a little bit for your knots on either end that you're going to do. It's going to end up being a little bit shorter than that. But overall, I like to start with about four feet to give you enough room. And then we're going to go to the 20 pound Maxima, which is our class tippet. And for that, you only need about two feet of it. We want to keep these leaders overall fairly short. And then the last section is going to be your bite guard. And again, this is one that I see guys oftentimes start with too little. Start off with a good 18, 20, maybe 24 inches so that you've got some room to change flies a couple times and make your knots. So going from the blood section to our, or the butt section rather, to our 20 pound class, we're just going to do a simple blood knot. And one of the little tips that I can give you is that when you're doing the first side of the knot with this thicker section of 40, I don't do as many turns as I do with this smaller 20 pounds. So I'll come in here and maybe do one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to go from me, away from me, through. And then I'm going to take the other side here, the 20 pound, and I might go around five or six times. And then now you're going to oppose that one, so it's going to go towards me as opposed to away from me like I did with the first one. And then you're going to want to grab both of those ends of those tags, pull them tight so you got something that looks like that, moisten it. You always want to lubricate your knots and then pull it tight. And this is where dealing with these bigger materials, you might have to really kind of wrap your hands around both sides and really cinch that up good and tight until that knot comes together. Just like so. And then you're going to come in with your nippers, trim off the tags on either side. Just like so. And then if you choose to, again, I like to use a UV knot sense or some sort of epoxy to clean these knots up. What that will do is it'll help to conceal those little tags and prevent any of these heavier materials from backing out on themselves. Now working down the leader, we've got about three or four feet of the 40 pound butt. We only need to leave maybe 10 to 12 inches of this 20 pound class in there. Much more than that and you start getting into a fairly long leader and I like to keep these pretty short, uh, usually less than six feet, right around five feet I think is pretty, pretty ideal. 
So we got about 10 inches or so of our 20 pound here and now we're gonna go to the bite. And for the bite guard here, and again, I'm gonna do this with heavy 80 pound fluorocarbon. There's a lot of different knots that you can do with this. You can do an Albright, you can do a Slim Beauty. I'm gonna do a double nail knot. And for that, again, I'm gonna use the tie fast knot tool there. And so all I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna overlap the 80 pound and the 20 pound. And this is where you gotta give yourself a little bit of extra uh, material to work with. So you're gonna lay the two top materials in the groove on the top of the knot tool here. Hold them down with your thumb. And then we're gonna take the tag end coming out this way, which is our 20 pound, and we're gonna start wrapping it around the knot tool here. And we're gonna go around about five times or so. I'll do one more. And then we're gonna take that end and go through the groove and then pull it snug out onto the 80 pound floor recovery. Now you can see it's just kind of sliding up and down there so you can adjust this next step a little bit. Now you're gonna take the whole thing and we're gonna flip it around so everything is opposite now and you're gonna do the exact same thing but with the fluorocarbon end of it. So you're gonna lay that knot in that groove again and because it slides you can pull out a little bit of the fluorocarbon, whatever you need there. Lay them both in there and again start wrapping it around. Remember to take this finger and kind of hold there each time otherwise this heavier material can kind of pop and coil right off there. We're only going to do about four wraps with this stuff and then again we're going to take that tag and we're going to go right back through there and then this is where you really want to make sure that you pull and snug it off of there and keep everything kind of in line. Now what's going to happen and it looks kind of loose and unkempt right now but you're going to pull like so and then as you snug them up those two knots are going to seat right next to each other like so and there you go they seated right up next to each other everything stays in a nice straight line and that's always one of the challenges tying with heavy fluorocarbon is you can get knots that kind of kink off to the side and this one stays in a nice straight line and then you can come in with your nippers again and trim those tags and again, if you want to uh, coat it with some epoxy or some knot sense, you can do that. And there's the finished product. So now we've got the finished product and we're just gonna kinda go over it here one more time just so that you can kinda see everything in line, how it lays out. We've got our butt section. And again, loop knot at the end there, 40 pound Maxima Chameleon. And then we run down about three or four feet of that material, blood knot to 20 pound class, and again, that's also Maxima Chameleon. And then we have the double nail knot to our bite guard. And in this case, it's 80 pound fluorocarbon, but again, some guys prefer to use wire. You can use the same technique, these same knots with wire, and it'll work equally well. One other question that I get often is, what do you do if you want to fish a sinking line or a sinking tip? Uh, leader's going to be a little bit different, but here's the beauty of it. I put these leaders together the night before a trip, a couple days before a trip. The only change that I'm going to make in the instance of using a sinking tip or a sinking line is that I'm going to keep the bite and the class the same, but I'm going to take this butt section, which as you can see here is about four feet or so, and I'm going to lop about a foot, foot and a half of that off. So over Overall, coming off of my sink tip, you're going to keep the terminal end of it the same. It's just the butt section you're going to shorten up a little bit, so you only want to be working with about three, maybe four feet. And the reason for that is if you've got too long of a leader section, it's going to kind of defeat the purpose of having the sink tip and the fact that the fly is going to want to ride up a little bit. So shorten everything up a little bit, keep the knots and connections the same if you're using a sinking line, and that's our basic musky leader.